Scotty, what does it mean to you to join this very elite club? Oh, it, it means a lot. You know, I think to to understand the history, and you know, I've been part of this footy club for for 17 years now. You sort of get to know the history and, and the people behind the scenes, and you know, to know the the sort of people that I've I've joined, and you know, I've been on the list with with four of the five guys that have played through under before me, and so to see how Glenn Archer, Drew Petrie, Adam Simpson, Brent Harvey, what this club means to them, and what it means to our, our supporters is is huge for me to, to join that list. And you've had a chance to go to other clubs over the years, but you've you stuck that, you've stuck loyal. Does that mean more to you that you? It yeah, time. definitely. I, I always was very open that I wanted to be a 300 game player for this footy club. Probably didn't think it was possible till the last couple of years, but that was always a, a goal of mine that to, if I could get there, um, you know, loyalty and, and being a one club player is a, a big thing to me and a big thing for my family. So I think that was yeah something that I always dreamed of. Was there ever a moment where you thought? Seriously, about leaving or going elsewhere, chasing a flag, chasing something else? Uh, no, it was never, never about chasing a flag or anything like that. There was, obviously, it got close to 2019 when the the club obviously went through a fair change with with Brad um, no longer coaching us, and you know there wasn't a contract there. So that was probably where you know the Geelong situation came from, and and it definitely considered that very strongly. Um, but you know it was more of a of an off field. Thing where I'd, I'd worked pretty hard on my mental space at that point in time to get myself in a good spot. And for me at that time, I thought that men mentally it was going to be better for me to stay in the end. 300 is a big number and the ruck obviously is such a combative position. How have you been able to maintain your body and, and get up for 299? I think it's just the, the preparation I've done over, over many years now. I'm very, very lucky that I've got a support network at home that support me to do whatever I need to do to, to get myself right. And you know, my wife, was an elite athlete. She was also an exercise scientist, so she writes a lot of my programs for me in the off season and, and holds me into that. So I think the work that I do in the off season there definitely sets me up each year. And you know, I think that the training load over the time has just has helped me well. And you know, I, I know how to recover and I know what my body needs. So it's about listening to that and, and doing what I need. How many more do you have in you? Do you think so? I, well, I don't want to get Brimmer too nervous, but you know, you know, no. Nah. <laughs> Who knows? You know, I know when you when you get to my age that it's. It is a year by year thing. It's a week to week thing. So um, I'm just trying to enjoy every game I've got. Hopefully, I've got plenty more in me, and, and the body's feeling good, the mind's feeling good. So I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So hopefully, I've got a few more. But um, I, I understand that you never quite know what's around the corner now. You're sporting a beautiful battle scar there in true uh, Ruckman style. Talk us through that, the old uh, shine. Yeah, I, I don't know if I want to actually say the story because in 10 years' time, when I get to tell it, I can make up whatever I want. But <laughs> no, I was just, I think, Cam Zerha. So what happens when you get a forward trying to be a, a midfielder? He got in the wrong spot, got too close, and his elbow came through. So he, he we like the way he's he comes in as a wrecking ball, but I prefer him to hit one of our position players, not me. And just on that, you have been able to survive and thrive in the probably the most aggressive position on the ground as such a nice bloke, and you never belted anyone, and um, you never really seem cranky on the field. How have you managed to, to pull that off? Oh look, I, I'm I'm about trying to change stereotypes, and and you know I, I know we all think about these big aggressive dopey ruckmen, so um, you know I'm try, I'm trying to bring a little bit of class to to the ruck fraternity, and um, yeah, look, I, you know I, I'm very proud that I've done being a ruckman my way. Um, obviously, I've had to adapt and adjust to different coaches and and different game styles and what the the game expects of us, but. You know, for the most part, I've been able to do it my way and I found what worked for me. And I, I didn't want to be, I think if I had to be someone else, I had to be that a big aggressive bloke that I don't reckon I would have lasted because it's probably not my go. So it's about knowing what, knowing yourself and what works for you. How do you go about handling the sort of the, the highs and the lows throughout 300 games? You know, you go from being an All-Australian Ruckman to, you know, there were a couple of, there were some form struggles a few years back and then obviously round one this year, you got left out. What, how do you go about handling all that and, and sort of still staying yeah, that's probably a better question for my family how I handle that. But uh, no, look, it, it, it's footy. It's a, it's a roller coaster ride, and when you're in this game for as long as I have been, you you do realise that you know you've got to you've got to take the highs when they're there, and and you know you've got to appreciate the lows that you know that they just make the highs even even more fun. So you know I think it's hard. You've got to work really hard men mentally. A, a lot of work with the psychs and things like that to be able to how to deal with that and what works for each individual person. But you know it's about you know in the end. No matter how bad things are, I realise how lucky I am to be playing this sport and, and doing this as, as a full-time job and have done this since I was 18. So uh, that sort of, that little cherry on top there makes it a, a little bit easier, I think. You kicked five goals in your 13th game, I think. Was there any chance you could have been converted to a key forward at that point? No, I reckon, I reckon all those goals were as a ruckman too. So I, 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 for some reason, I've never quite got to work on my forward craft. I think it's there somewhere, it's hidden, but 
um, no, I enjoy I enjoy trying to set the boys up more. I think my first hit out was a, a goal to Drew Petrie, and I think I got more enjoyment out of that one. And over the, the years, you've probably played against, what do you think, 70 or 80 other Ruckman at least. What are the, some of the battles that you've relished or that have stuck in your mind over the years? Yeah, well, I think every time me and Maxie get to play against each other, you know, it's always fun. I think we always... One of us tends to get the, the upper hand, and you know, I think that the, there was a game down in, in Tassie where I kicked five and he kicked three and had sixty odd hit outs. So um, that was a, a fair battle. I think I just got him. I think I just got the Brownlow votes over him. But um, it was yeah. Look, someone like that, someone like a, a Dean Cox, I learnt so much from playing against him in the early days. I think there's plenty of times where I try to emulate a little bit of what he did and how he goes about his footy in terms of being that extra midfielder. And I think. I learned a lot from the times that he, he just tore me up in the last quarter and, and took the game away from us. So, you know, they're probably two of the more fondest memories I've got. And can you take us back to the game against GWS where you got 80 hit outs and what was going through your mind? Did you know that you were racking up a world record? Uh, no, I had no idea, to be honest. And I actually had a similar black eye then. I, I was struggling to see out of that, that day as well. So uh, maybe it's fitting I got one today. But no, I, I, I had no idea. Um, I think anyone that's played ruck sort of knows it, it's hard. You can't always keep track of, of that. And it's the last thing you're thinking about is, is how many times you've actually hit the ball. So, um, yeah, no, I was, I was quite shocked when I, when I saw that. Can I take you back to round one again? Just the psyche, knowing you were so close to game 300, you're being left out you know, for the first round. Is there, oh, wow, I might not be in the plans at this stage? Like... Oh, I mean, it, it's the, the combination of, of a few months. And I think it, it obviously hurt. And we're all proud players, we all want to be playing. So it, it definitely hurt, but I understood the reasoning. I knew it was, was going to be close between me and Tristan. And you know, there was, whether we played two or not, it, it wasn't a week where we needed two Ruckman, they didn't think. So I, I fully understood. And you know, you sort of, you're upset for a few hours, you deal with it, you, you, know, you talk to your family and friends about it, and then you realise that you got a job to do. And that was to, for me to help Tristan play well in that game and to help the, our VFL side and our young boys and I, and I tried to relish that and tried to help the, the boys as much as I could but you know it is just part of being an elite athlete you know that there comes a chance where you get to a point where you might not get picked or, or might get dropped and you know it's just about how you respond and I feel like I, I handled it well and I think I've, I've responded. Do you know what will happen once Tristan does return? Or have you had those discussions and you're hopeful that we'll no, have two Ruckman? Yeah, not, not yet. I, they've always been clear that it's, it's going to be a week-to-week -week thing. If, if they feel we need two Ruckman, then we can both play. Uh, if not, then you know, I need to do as well as I can to, to try and hold my spot. And, and if not, I'll, I'll go back and, and perform in the VFL. Um, during your career, there's been a lot of changes to, to Ruck work. We have third man up, taking out of the game and nominating. Have you, noticed, have you had to adjust your game at all this year? With, there's been a bit of a crackdown on me and a few players have been issued fines. Have you had to sort of adjust the way you protect yourself because of that crackdown? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you're obviously aware that that can happen at times, but I haven't really encountered it too many times so far. Um, so, yeah, of, of all the, the crackdowns, that's probably affected me the least. And it's probably not something I, I tend to do as much of. So, um, no, it hasn't, hasn't affected me at all. What's the representation going to be like, given you, you don't get to play the game in, in Melbourne? family flying up? And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think, to be honest, I haven't really engaged in a lot of that sort of stuff. My wife behind the scenes has done a lot of the power of that work. So, yeah, I think we've got about 20 or 30 people, family and friends coming up. Um, when you have five kids and things like that, that takes a few of the seats up. But, um, yeah, so I've got a few. It's obviously hard being the Gold Coast school holidays and stuff. It, it is hard to get up there. But, um, yeah, no, I've got, a, I've got enough. And in the end, I, I know all the love and support I got from all my family and friends without them being there. Are you hoping Jared Witts plays? Just Someone you would have had a few battles with? Uh, yeah, I'm not too fast. Whatever they decide, yeah. um, you know, I think I think Ned's you know put himself quite well the last few weeks. So I know it's going to be a pretty tough battle, no matter who it is, and, and hopefully we can get the chocolates. What's the ideal 300 game goal? Uh, we get a win. That's simple that's as simple as that. I, I, I'm beyond the point where I really care about how many hit outs or how many touches I get. Um, you know, I just want to win the game, hopefully, and. I know the boys can do their best to, to do that and, and we're really looking forward to another opportunity to, to grow and, and to build on our system. Any special requests for afterwards at Bottle Wine or...? <laughs> nah, 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 I think it'll be very quiet. It'll be very, very quiet, I think, just to nice, spend some nice time with the family. It's all, any, it's all I ask for. Any merch? Any Goldie 300? We've seen hoodies and... Um, yeah, and I, I think, I think the, all the boys were wearing um, a T-shirt this morning, and, and one, of, one of the supporters showed me a, um, a stubby holder as well. So, yeah, because I'm such a big drinker, they thought a stubby holder would be quite appropriate. Do you have an all-time favourite hit out that you'd like us to highlight? <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm no. I'm, I, I, I've had nearly 10,000. Um, no, not, not, none really stick out 
to be to be honest. Um, yeah, probably one down Cunners' throat would be nice. Is that record going to get better for you <clears throat> probably after footy than you've had the most hit-outs ever? Is that going to be your, your calling card when you hit the circuit? <laughs> I've, I already have a business card made up. No, <laughs> no oh, look, it's, um, it's something I'm very proud of. I know people don't often rate hit-outs that highly, but for me it's, it's about your ruck craft and it's not as easy it looks to, to get your hand on the ball and um, you know, I feel like a lot of them have gone to the spot where we want them to so look it's something I'm very proud of and, it, and I know how hard I've had to work for that not being an overly tall ruckman either um, coming up against people like Sanderlands and, and Jared Witts and Gorney who've got a fair f bit of height on me um, yeah to be able to work on my ruck craft to be able to, to win enough to get there is I'm something I'm pretty proud of. Is that your rucking shin? Because that one's mangled and cut the pieces, and that's. Nah, nah. The, well, obviously, the one, the one I wear is shin guard. That's that's why we wear shin guards. It's, yeah, nah. The, the the other leg's copped a fair bit of, of boots studs to the leg, um, but my, my my shin guard leg is is pristine. <laughs> Can we ask about the future, Goddy? I know it's very early in the year to ask, and you're probably not going to give us a real full on answer. But when is it beyond this year? Uh, t to be honest, um, that's not only back. I have no idea. Um, I, I think at this point, yeah, I'm, I'm keen to, to look to play on, um, but we have no, had no conversations with the footy club. I haven't had any conversations with my manager about it. Um, for me, it's just about trying to help this footy club where I can this year, and, and when it gets to close to the end of the year, I'm sure those discussions we had, but I understand that when you, when you get to 34, 35, that these decisions take, take a bit of time. Um, and yeah, you know, I think it'll be what's best for the footy club, what's best for me and my family, and, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Would you play on if they said to you, you play the majority of the year in the VFL next year? Would that be something? Uh, yeah, yeah, on? quite possibly. As I said, I, I haven't given it too much thought. Um, and yeah, it's going to be ends up what's going to work best for, for me, my family, and, and for, for this footy club or, or whatever end up ha happening. No regrets about choosing footy over basketball? Uh, no, I, I think I'm. I think I can officially say I'm a, I'm a footballer. Um, I think that, that <laughs> he was a basketballer. I think he's long gone now. Um, but no, I, you, you never know what could happen. But um, I sit here. I'm, I'm pretty happy that my school made me play footy, and I'm pretty happy that with the decision I made.